Fédération internationale de la FNIM. Euh, je pense que vraiment c'est un challenge que nous avons entrepris ensemble avec beaucoup de monde qui sont autour, notamment de la Côte d'Azur, parce que sur la Côte d'Azur, les relations internationales, nous avons commencé il y a cinq ans avec euh, plusieurs organisations de conventions internationales, chaque fois de très nombreux pays. Et nous avons apporté notre expertise, notre savoir-faire à la fédération pour qu'un grand nombre de nos adhérents profitent de l'international. Parce que l'international, c'est un très grand challenge. L'international, c'est la découverte euh, des autres par nous-mêmes. Il faut aller chercher les clients, les gens, chez eux. C'est ça l'international. Il ne faut pas attendre que les clients ils poussent la porte de nos agences. Il y a plusieurs moyens et la FNIM met à la disposition de nos adhérents plusieurs volumes pour réussir. Concernant cette manifestation, je pense que ça a été une très grande réussite. Euh, on a fait vraiment tout ce qu'on a pu. En, en, en tout cas, nos invités sont très contents. Euh, il y a eu 33 pays, plusieurs organisations professionnelles. Et je pense que vraiment c'est la satisfaction totale. Et puis, euh, j'espère que la soirée viendra le plus tôt possible parce que vraiment on a, on a donné tout ce qu'on a pu. I can say also a few words in English. Uh, this uh, conference was a real success. Uh, we are trying to do our best at FNIM to bring to our members all the knowledge, the expertise to uh, give them all the potential of international who is completely unlimited. And uh, we can say that today the 33 countries uh, were present here. They were all happy, so, uh, total satisfaction, and we also. Thank you very much. First of all, um, NAR has bilateral relationships with 81 associations in 60 countries around the world. Much like our relationship with FNIM, um, we have um, agreements with those other associations to work together and to help create avenues for our members to do business together. And, um, and in many cases, it's a very active relationship where we're actively meeting with them and talking about um, discovering new ways that we can do business together, sharing best practices like we do with FNIM, and um, working to build business bridges for our members. In other cases, the associations aren't quite as well developed and it's a more um, supportive relationship in helping them to get organized and hoping that someday they'll reach a point where we can start building bridges for the members to do business. Um, along with that, we are, have just announced at our convention in November that we are globalizing uh, Realtor.com. So that's a huge benefit that we're rolling out um, for our members and to our partner associations around the world. We'll be able to add their listings to Realtor.com. Um, for those who may not be aware, Realtor.com is the number one real estate site and uh, with 13 plus million um, listings, or excuse me, visits per month and about uh, six and a half million of those are unique which means that most of those consumers come back to the site um, every month. And interestingly enough, almost 600,000 of those monthly visits are from um, visitors outside the U.S. So for the U.S. members, we know that we've got um, a significant number of visits from outside the U.S., so we'll be adding translations to the site. And um, then for uh, the countries from outside the U.S. who wish to put their listings on Realtor.com, then you have 13 million visits that you'll be able to take advantage of. Merci. Effectivement, ces chiffres sont, sont très impressionnants. Ils sont à l'échelle, bien entendu, américaine. Et euh, on comprend tout l'intérêt pour, pour les professionnels de se, de se raccorder à ce, à, à ce site. Madame Schwenzler, vous, vous êtes euh, la cheville ouvrière avec Kirkor et Géranian du, du rapprochement entre la FNIM et, et la NAR. Euh, concrètement, euh, quel bilan faites-vous de ces relations après, je dirais, quelques années de, de mise en place Et euh, globalement, euh, comment est-ce que vous jugez, euh, je dirais, le, ce rapprochement entre nos deux organisations 
I think that the primary goal of our uh, relationship is to understand how each of our countries do business and in that respect be able to pass on that information to individual members of our associations and federations for greater understanding. I find that uh, education of the American realtor is primary to understanding how other people do business. And we do that through a certified international property specialist program. And that in itself uh, makes for easier transitions into the actual transaction stage so that American agents who have individuals who are their own property overseas or who wish to purchase property have a better understanding of how to treat that foreign buyer. Um, I think the greatest obstacle to doing business transnationally is the fact that the American likes instantaneous gratification. Responds to almost immediately any inquiry from either another broker, agent, or a customer. That does not seem to be the case in Europe, or it certainly has not, to the detriment of business transactions, been the case with French agents that I have found. Uh, there is either no response or there is a response and the business has gone elsewhere. So I would say that uh, what we've learned is we have to press for communication and it would be wonderful if uh, FNAIM uh, made a point of teaching the agents in this country that instant gratification is not a bad thing and a telephone call could lead to a very lovely check. <laughs> We're very excited that uh, international real estate is such an important part of Miami and uh, such an important part of our members' business. When the National Association of Realtors started doing an international study, it was about three years ago, I think, Janet. Um, and then they started doing one for Florida. And so for the first time, we asked them to do one specifically for Miami. And for the first time ever, France was listed as one of the countries, major countries, doing business and, and buying real estate in Miami. And so if you stop to think about in Florida, one in every four transactions involving an international buyer in the entire United States happens in Florida. One in three of those transactions happens in Miami. And so you think about the volume of international business and international money flow that's happening in Miami. Right now, the figures are approximately 50 to 60% of every transaction happening in Miami involves an international buyer or investor. That's a lot of money. We were very pleased to see that 6% of those buyers come from France. And that's the first time ever that France has been recorded as a major market for buying in Miami. We really believe that it's largely due to our partnership with FNIM Paris and now FNIM. We've been exhibiting at the Paris Expo for five years and every year growing interest to a point where the last two years we have standing room only um, potential buyers and investors in our seminars and our booth for four days is nonstop. So it's nice to see that those are resulting in sales of, of French buyers in Miami. As you can see, I've prepared a few um, strong points, I think, to illustrate our market. First of all, um, there's only one Manhattan, just like there's only one Paris. There's a huge similarity in terms of um, desirability. Uh, some of the facts that uh, I think are very relevant are we have a high equity market. By that I mean, oh, I'm sorry. By that I mean that um, 
In the cooperative structure of an apartment, there are two kinds of purchases in terms of apartments, co-ops and condominium. And in the cooperative and condominium markets, there is a very high equity value to those apartments because to purchase an apartment in Manhattan, in one of these vertical buildings, these high rises, one has to put down a minimum of 20%. The banks have never lend more than 80% financing on apartments that are financed. And in most categories of co-ops, you must put at least 50% down or all cash. Those are the requirements of the building. So you see, people don't walk away from equity in a crisis market, and we had no foreclosures in these categories. In fact, when you look at New York, Manhattan, or actually New York, city market and you see some foreclosures, those are in the boroughs. They're in Brooklyn, they're in Queens, they're in the Bronx, but nothing in Manhattan came to a foreclosure situation. Justement, puisque nous parlons des, des outils internationaux, <laughs> Monsieur Stoffer, donc euh, secrétaire général d'ICREA, euh, nous parler justement des outils que ICREA met à la disposition des professionnels euh, de l'immobilier et de, du rôle de cette organisation. Well, yes, there is um, a lot of healthy competition on the market, as we've just been hearing. <laughs> so if you really want to find out about these things, uh, <clears throat> you know, Acrea has a platform for that, and we're, we're very uh, fortunate to uh, have them uh, together with uh, Proxio, and Robert will speak about that, uh, that later. You spoke about it as well. Um, the French uh, uh, members will have access to that platform as well, uh, starting uh, today. Um, so the, um, uh, what, what we've done is to, uh, to provide the opportunity for all of you who want to know about these things to find and network with uh, people in these, uh, in these regions by very easily going online and searching in areas, putting your criteria in for sort of uh, people that you want to connect with and find the agents in New York <coughs> or Connecticut or in Miami and make up your own mind how to find the best deal for your for your clients. So we have a platform which enables the international business. That's basically what we're about. <laughs>